Welcome. Um, those of us here at Northgate want to welcome you who are here in person and those of you that are also watching on Facebook and at home that were not able to be here in attendance. Um, as the family and friends of Greg Mikowski, we are gathered here in the presence of God to remember Greg and to find comfort from God during this time of mourning. The psalmist wrote, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And then the writer of the book of Hebrews said, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And for those who wrestle with so many questions as we face the loss of a loved one, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians, For now we see through a glass darkly. Someday we shall understand, even as we are understood. This assures us that one day all of our questions will be answered and everything will be made clear. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, how grateful we are that we have someone as loving and compassionate as you, for that you are the one we turn to in our time of need. You alone know the thoughts of each heart that's bowed in your presence. And so I would ask that you would comfort all who mourn as only you can. We thank you today for Greg and the lasting influence and impression he has on his family and his friends. We pray that his memory might be a delight to each of us and that his death would stand to remind us of the brevity of life because none of us know when our time will come to leave this world. We ask that in our time here today that each of us would hear the word of God with an open heart and that we would respond in a way that's pleasing to you. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're now going to have Pastor Randy come and read our the obituary. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Greg was born December the 18th, 1952, in Indiana to the late Edward and Mamie Wittenberg Mikowski. Greg was a veteran of the U.S. Army and was stationed in Germany. He worked as a carpenter for many years and renovated historic homes in the Alexandria, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. area. Greg is survived by his son, Alan Hunter Mikowski, and wife, Francesca. A sister, Rebecca Diane Donnelly of Salisbury, brother, Arthur William Bill Walters, and wife, Deborah of Elkhart, Indiana, and grandchildren, Leonardo uh, Gabriel Mikowski, Killian Hunter Mikowski, and Magnolia Jean Mikowski. In the few times that I was able to meet with Greg, three or four, five times, um, he was we. He he was a fun person, and 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 that we always told jokes, and that we laughed, and he had this dry wit, wit wit dry wit, 
dry humor about him. And, uh, and then, of course, coupled with my awful cuff comments, we always got along really well. And um, he was a joy, uh, even though we only, Rebecca, just met three or four times, but we always spent about an hour together and just enjoyed uh, his general demeanor. And so I became quite fond of, of Greg and, and grateful for the influence he had in my life in just the few times that I met him. He was always smiling, always uh, cheerful, enjoyed, great to see me. And um, I uh, am sorry that he has passed. And I know that this is a difficult place for all of you to be. But know that God is going to comfort you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to help you in the coming days and weeks and months ahead. Thank you. Um, when I was preparing to share something this morning, um, it kind of expanded the way I needed to think about it because it's not just those that are here present now, but with technology the way it is, it's going to be, it will be on Facebook for you to share with people that you would like to share. And um, I just really prayed about what God wanted to have shared with the masses beyond what is even here with us today. Um, I asked Rebecca what scripture, scripture, actually Susan did it for me, but I asked Rebecca what scripture that she would like shared this morning and what would mean the most to her to have shared. And this is her request. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In this passage, we have an invitation from Jesus, and it's an invitation to come to him and to prepare ourselves for the day that we have to meet God face to face. Many of us try to live good lives. We give money where we can. We help somebody out when we're able. And all of this is good. But this is not what Jesus was looking for when he said, come unto me. Notice the word come. Come is an invitation or it is a command to be obeyed. As anyone who's ever tried to coerce a three-year-old off a playground knows when I say, come here, you come, well, there's actually some freedom of choice there for some children, right, that don't always listen. Or when Rebecca says, come on, Greg, quit drinking from the milk carton, you know, there is, um, she did have two, I found out, in case guests came, they didn't have to drink out of the same <laughs> gallon. Just, I wanted to comfort anyone who'd ever ate a bowl of cereal there, okay? Um, so, come is a word that can be done or it can be refused. As Moses told the children of Israel long ago, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing or curse. All that you would choose life that you and your children might live. Notice there is an action on our part. We have to choose. Come, follow me. Come, be my disciple. Come unto me. He is always inviting us to walk along the path that he is traveling. He invites us to an intimate relationship with him that far exceeds the walls of a man-made church and the constraints of a man-made religious system. We must decide we, whether we will answer and follow the call. We live filled, we live filled, we live in a world, there we go, filled with promises. Come with us, says one group, and you'll be rich. Come with us and you'll be happy. But the world can make all the promises they want, but that's all they are is words. However, when the Lord promises something, he is able to do 
what he promises. He is faithful to do what he promises. And he is willing to do what he promises. And what he promises is this. Come unto me, all you who are lab labor and are heavy laden, and this is it, I will give you rest. Some of the people that labor and are heavy laden are those going through life without knowing Christ. They have no purpose, no drive. They don't know what happens at the end. That would be definitely be a feeling of being heavy laden. However, there are those who labor and are heavy laden that know the Lord and faithfully serve Him, but find life to still be full of trials and hardships and difficulties, pain and suffering. Because being a child of God doesn't remove all of that. However, However, have hope. There is a sense of rest that God can give us while we're here on earth. Rest from the burden of sin and from the worriness of everyday life. I believe that to also ease our burdens, he put special people in our life, like Greg. The one-of-a-kind guy with such incredible hair. I mean, okay, let's all just take a moment and pause. He would appreciate that. His hair was amazing. Um, that drank milk straight from the carton. Mm. He came back into Rebecca's life for such a time as this. Now, upon talking to Rebecca, what Greg thought was going to happen is he thought he was going to have surgery he was going to move in with Rebecca so Rebecca could help take care of him. Well, I asked her yesterday, I said, I don't remember ever hearing about Greg having surgery. And that's because he, he didn't at that time. He showed up at the right time and the right place to be a perfect help for Rebecca during her surgery. To take her to visits, to, for checkups, to be a source of comfort when otherwise she might would have felt pretty alone. Now, let's ask a question. Did Rebecca and Greg get along all the time? <laughs> Did anyone and Greg get along all the time? <laughs> let's be real. <laughs> no. But Greg was in the right place at the right time. Because this is what he saw. Rebecca was able to model through her everyday life her walk with Christ. And you know what happened in return? Maybe not even knowing he was doing it, Greg was able to model the same thing. Greg was created in the image of God. The same God that desires all of us to have a deeper relationship with him. This God offers us rest from our weariness, from our labors, from our sinful nature that separates us from him. So as we acknowledge today that we're gathered together as a support for this family and, and because of Greg's passing, that special guy was so used by God that he motivated and encouraged Rebecca on Sunday mornings. She told me that Greg would even check on Saturday. No, you're going to church tomorrow, right? You know, he wasn't going to cut her any slack just because he wasn't coming, you know? I mean, this was, he was used by God in all of these situations for Rebecca. He also made sure she was coming, and I love this part, because you just need to be around all those sweet ladies because he thought maybe it would kind of offset his personality. <laughs> so... You know, I mean, I thought that was good. That was good. Balance it out a little. You know, rough around the edges. Go, go hang out with some sweet ladies. So she started coming four times a week. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, we all realize that we will eventually face death. We can't outlast it. We can't fight it with money. We can't fight it any other way. 
So how do we face it? We face it as a sinner who's in need of forgiveness. And we face it as someone who receives the life that comes through the shed blood of our Jesus Christ. And the resurrected life of Christ Jesus. There is a hymn that I'm not going to sing, don't worry. But, um, and I love hymns, so, you know, I had to find one. Um, that tends to um, encapsulate this that I found. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lay down, thou weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus as I was, weary and worn and sad. And I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. So today we offer to the family um, the, the encouragement that this rest is found in the Lord. That the hope that so many look for is found in the Lord. And sometimes it takes times like this for us to sit around and really focus. Because I have to tell you, death is not something that's on my mind consistently. But when we are forced to think about it, we're forced to make some decisions. And those decisions are what will play out when our time on earth is done. So I encourage you today, if you haven't made those decisions, that there are plenty of people that you can talk to. Um, Rebecca is a great person to talk to, but um, that, that we can help you in the, any decisions that you have to make. Um, I want to pray. Lord, we thank you that you are the Lord of all mercies, who cares for all of your people with an everlasting love. You are the God of all comfort who consoles all those that are suffering the death of a loved one. You are the God of all peace, who has promised to pour your perfect peace into the hearts of your children who are going through the pain and suffering that the loss of a precious loved one brings. Lord, I pray that you would become their strength in this time of loss, their joy in this time of sorrow, in their perfect peace in their hearts. Speak into the hearts of all your children that are mourning at this time, and let them not mourn as those who have no hope. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I scarce can take it in that on the cross in humble gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul
was beautiful. Um, when I spoke to Rebecca this past week, one of the other things we talked about was the importance of, of closure, having a, a service to commemorate, to remember how, um, how much they touched and impacted our life. And, um, and when we have closure in a service, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden when you walk out, the pain is gone. But it does mean that we know someone that can take the pain away. And, um, and so we would like to give this opportunity to anyone that would like to share. Rebecca, we're going to start with you. I'm coming down there to you. And um, we're going to let you share what is on our heart. What, what's on? Share what's on my heart. <laughs> Can you do that? Okay. How about share what's on yours instead? That might be easier. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, you don't know what it means to have family and friends. <laughs> it's just been such a joy to me and, and a strength, a very good strength. Uh, this is kind of new to me. I haven't lost many people in my life. And when I have uh, one, I was just absolutely devastated with. But this time, I have somebody with me. I have somebody who just cries with me and then lets me come back out of it and know that I'm doing all right. This is the way to go. This is the strength that I've been giving. And he's been crying with me for so long now. I mean, the Lord is just, the Lord is so wonderful. And I wish I would learn to forget that word just because there's no just he in talking about him or talking to him. But he gave me a brother, a brother that I fought with and I fought for and I cried with and laughed with. When he came back into my life, I knew he was having a rough time. And I wasn't sure what was going to happen. Um, if we'd get along all right, if I'd be able to get through. I mean, we led very different lives. But God gave me a gift I have a tendency to be judgmental sometimes. <laughs> and he gave me a gift that soothed it away. All of a sudden, certain odors didn't bother me anymore, where they used to just really bother me. I couldn't stand the smell of coffee. And of course, Greg was a coffee drinker. And you know, just, just little things like that. And, and the way he talked, I seemed to forget that that bothered me. <laughs> He loved me. He loved me with his whole heart. He was so sweet and so encouraging. He told me, you know, like Carla was saying, go talk to those beautiful women you meet all the time. Go have lunch. He would even give me a $20 bill, and I'd be like, what's this? He's go have lunch with one of them. <laughs> he was good. And he did take me to the doctors, and... I knew how much he hated hospitals, like most, most of us do, but he stayed there with me. And when I had to go to Duke, I thought, I won't be able to see him. I won't have my strength. But he did. He made it every day. He made it every day. And for a while, they let him stay. And then COVID hit. But he stayed every day, and he was with me and got me through things. And I went through a time... Uh, the medication I had been on and what was going on with me at the time just depleted my potassium. And I wasn't thinking straight. And I didn't realize what was going on at some times. But Greg was right there, and he understood. And when they came in for me to take me to the operating room, that's one thing that never bothered me before. I, I know who my Savior is, and I know who my strength is, and what will be will be. But this time, I was scared. And I didn't want to go to that operating room with those doctors. And I wanted to stay behind. And Greg brought out, he could see what was going on in me. And he took out his phone real quick. And he went to Lindsay Sterling, who played the uh, violin. And he, she played Hallelujah. And he says, later, he says, and I could see your hands just fell open. And that you were all at once at peace. And it was like, 
like, you noticed that. <laughs> I mean, it was unreal that it just brought me such peace. But he knows how to do that sort of thing. And he knew how to get my temper, of course. <laughs> but it was a nice rounding off. And I loved him. I'm going to miss him oh so much. He was a beautiful, beautiful person. I'm sorry you all couldn't know him. But thank you for coming because in the days to come and I start crying again, you'll know why. And you'll just give me a hug and say it's okay. And I'll believe it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm, I'm Hunter. I'm Greg's son. I'm not really ready, and I didn't know I was going to talk. So um, this is all just ad lib. Um, <sighs> uh, my dad, yeah, he was my dad. Um, he was always there for me when he could, um, when he could be. Him and my mom didn't work out, and... Uh, I got to visit my dad every other weekend, and it was, he got to be the fun dad, and um, I got three kids of my own, and I'm not the fun dad, uh, and I'm like, man, he was so lucky, but, but we, you know, we, um, we got to spend a lot of time in my teenage years, um, I tell people my mom kicked me out, but I walked out when I was 16, and I spent the rest of those years um, with my dad, and it wasn't just me. I had, like, all the rebellious teens in that city. They all, like, lived under our roof. You know, they all had, like, spots on the floor or on the couch or whatever. And um, he was always happiest, like, making a meal for, for all of us and, like, watching over, watching out for all of us. And, um, you know, it's, it was really touching to hear, hear you say that, like, you know, you know, he was acting out God's will like he was here to serve a purpose. And then I look back and think on that in that perspective. And I'm like, that's, you know, he was always happiest when he was of service to other people. And, um, you know, that's, it's weird because that message was hitting me all week. But in regards to something I'm going through, and I'm like, man, it's time for me to step up too and be of service to other people. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to miss him. Um you know, he was always there for me, you know. It wasn't, <laughs> ugh, it wasn't until he passed that, like, I cried and let another man hold me. Um, so it's, you know, life's about growth, and I'm, I'm growing. But, yeah, I'm going to miss him a lot. So thanks. Thank you. Anyone else that wants to share? Catrice. So after Rebecca had her surgery, I delivered some food several times. And I remember the first time I stopped by, she said, well, don't worry about it. My, my brother will come out and he'll get the food, and then you can just go ahead and leave. No big deal. Okay. So I get to the house. He comes out the garage, just like Pastor Randy said, and we get to talking. Of course, I'm not a big talker. <laughs> yeah, they all know that I'm lying. <laughs> Anyway, so we sit out there, and I'm sitting on the hood of my car, and he's, he finds him a chair, and he sits down, and we're just sitting there chilling, talking. There's food in a bag on the ground in between us. Here comes Rebecca. <laughs> out the garage <laughs> looking like, where is it? What, where's my food? Because she knew I was coming. She knew I was there. And so we're, I mean, it's been, what, 20, 30 minutes? <laughs> And so she just finally was just like, okay. So she goes back in the house. <laughs> and this happened every single time I brought food. So I just realized, I'm like, we're just going to sit there and talk for a bit. So I let her know I was coming. And the food's still nice and warm even afterwards. But it was just, it was nice to talk with them. You know, being, I mean, I was in the military too. So we all, we had that in common. But it was really easy to talk to them. Is something that I realized. I mean, just met the man. You know, I knew it was Rebecca's brother, but that's all I knew about him at the time. But it was just so super easy to <laughs> talk to him. And it was just, it was a very refreshing that even though maybe he was a little abrasive in the way he spoke, but honestly, I got it because I was in the military too. So I understand, you know, sometimes where that's coming from. So I get it, you know, but it didn't, it, it wasn't abrasive to me. 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, sometimes when people, they can be harsh or abrasive or maybe that's not the appropriate word. I don't know. I'm trying to think of the right word. But, you know, sometimes it doesn't rub you raw like it does other people because you, you've been there, you've done that, you've got, you get it, you know? But it was really nice because it was almost like we were very, like on the same page. But it was very refreshing. And I enjoyed talking to him the few times that I actually did get to talk to him. And I, I am very glad that I was able to deliver that food for you. <laughs> Anyone else want to share? Thank you for coming today. Um, oh, this one here. I only met him one time. It was when I went to pick Rebecca up first to go to a women's conference, but he was so kind and gentle, and what I knew was he loved his sister. So God used Greg to humble me one time. <laughs> Rebecca knows what I'm getting ready to say. And so we were, we were just talking. It hadn't been too long after I'd been the pastor of the church. And, and uh, uh, so I felt prompted by the Holy Spirit to say, can I pray for you? Because he was talking about some of the aches and pains that he had. And I said, well, Greg, can I pray with you? And he said, have a good day. And he just walked off. And, <laughs> and I I was like, Lord, are you, are you, did you not tell me to pray for him? <laughs> well, and that, uh, I'm such a bad pastor. I mean, I've never had anybody say, have a good day. <laughs> and so I, later I told Rebecca, I said, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to offend him. He said, ah, that's just, that's just Greg. So every time after that, that I met with him, I was always praying in my mind. <laughs> Everything, I, I was like, bless him, Jesus. Speak to him, God. You know, turn, him, turn his heart closer to you. And he never knew that. I guess he knows now. <laughs> He's here. So, anyway, he, it, it was just funny, though. I just was like, I, I, I've never had anybody just say, have a good day. Uh, so it was very humbling. But he was a very, very generous man. And I, I really enjoyed being around him. But he was the one person that God used to humble me. Well, he's used a lot of people. Greg was the most recent. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, Savannah. Oh, I'm sorry. This about Mr. Greg is he constantly spoke about his family and how much he loved them. And he said, I want to tell you something. I love my son. I love my sister. I love my entire family. And that's all he spoke about when he was around me. And he said, I've been hard on them, and I know I've been hard on them. And that's something I don't want them to know is that I love them so stinking dearly. And he would say that every single time. So after Greg passed, I called Rebecca several days in a row, or maybe it was a week after he passed, I'm not sure, but I remember calling you and and just, um, we had delightful conversation. We laughed, we cried, and I was like, man, she is a character. But anyway, I think we're talking about Greg, right? So um, she told me that he was this amazing cook and was telling me that he, um, he would make all these sauces like uh, Oriental, Asian, different ones, not just sweet and sour, sweet and sour, sweet and sour, out of a bottle, but he made his own from scratch. And I was like, and why did you not invite me over, Rebecca, during these days when he was like the gourmet cook? And, um, and you said he did Asian, I think you said maybe Mexican. And I'm like, who does that? I know my son-in-law does, and I know Kevin James is a great cook, but I mean, um, 
not only did he give you companionship, you know, he provided not just open a can of corn and open a can of green beans and buy spam, you know, or and just have this basic meal, but he put his whole heart and soul into it. I think he took joy in that cooking. And I think that was, you know, you said God put him in your life for such a time as this, or the way you said that, Carla, was so beautiful. But I'm like, you know, that is a beautiful expression of love to cook for someone with such flair and make it so delicious. I know, you know, when it, when you think about those times, your mouth will water, <laughs> you know, thinking about all those wonderful dishes. But what a beautiful servant's heart, you know. And it's interesting hearing um, Catrice's comments about the abrasive. You know, sometimes if we can look past those outer things that kind of get us tripped up and just see the heart, what a big heart he had to cook for you so lavishly. And that's, that's a beautiful thing, that he, he walked in servanthood toward you. He didn't just say, I love you, sis, you know, but, but he, he showed it. Um, something I've felt like the Lord has kept reminding me of as people were sharing and that he wanted to remind you of is not only did he put Greg in your life for such a time as this, but the Lord doesn't throw up his hands and say, well, you got what I had to offer. Because right now I know you're going through what's going to be your next step. You know, are you going to stay where you are? Are you going to move? Are you going to, you know, what are you going to do? And just like he provided Greg at the time you needed him then, God's going to provide what you need now. It may come in the form of a person. It might come, we don't know what it's going to look like. But God's not going to leave you for figuring out the rest on your own. And um, what I feel like when I was praying about how I wanted to end today, I asked <laughs> Pastor Randy, I said, I know this is not conventional, but this is how I feel like we're supposed to end. And I forgot to tell you, so surprise. Um, is um, I really feel like we're supposed to gather around Rebecca, Hunter, Fran, and, let, and pray for them. And um, so I invite you, those of you who won't, those of you who want to are invited, the rest of you, you may stay seated for a few minutes and and we are going to uh, pray for them. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for Rebecca and for Hunter and for Fran. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for uh, their hearts, <clears throat> their spirits. They're very much alive right now and I pray Father that you would draw them to you in a way that you've never drawn them before that you would open up their hearts to receive more of what you have for them in the name of Jesus in Jesus name and Lord I thank you for Rebecca and I thank you as Carla said she had pretty much the same word that I did that uh, God will provide and we are your family and um we're going to take care of you. We're going to look out for you, and we're going to help you. All you got to do is call or text, and um, we'll be there. And so the Lord wants you to know that, that he's not going to leave you without people in your life. Thank you, Father. And, Lord, I thank you for Hunter and for Fran. And may this, I think, Lord, you provided uh, this opportunity so they could um, experience um, your love. Uh, shown through the people here today that they're not just a couple people that showed up and it's their dad's memorial service but they are very much alive as I began to pray and that God has a, a great adventure for each of you and I pray that you would open up their hearts and you're after them you're chasing after them just like you chase after all of us and they would open up their hearts to this great adventure that you have for them I thank you and I bless them Lord in Jesus name God, I just feel the word joy welling up within me. <clears throat> and so I just speak that over Rebecca today. Yes, there will be sorrow as there has been. There will be um, pain. There will be sadness. There will be loneliness. 
there will be such a sense of loss. And and you, God, are not saying, okay, get over it now. It's It's good, you know, I've helped you and everything's good. I thank you, Father, you're not that way. I thank you, Father, that you are there for every teardrop. Oh, for every low day and blue day. But Lord, I thank you that greater days are ahead. And so um, I just speak the word from the Lord over you today, Rebecca, and that is joy is in your future. And it's, it's the joy of the Father welling up within you even when it doesn't make sense, even when your emotions maybe go in a different direction, but the Father's heart is so full of joy. And you can look at nature exploding around us. He made the blue sky. He made the green grass and the bunnies and the butterflies and the flowers and the trees. That is the Father's heart. And as you see that, The Father is saying, come, just as Carla's sermon today and and message, come, step into this new season in your life. Step into my joy. And I thank you, Lord, that it's not her trying. Okay, I'm going to be joyful. God said his joy was in me, so here I go. I'm joyful, joyful, I'm smiling. It will not be that. It will be something welling up within her it will be the river of god flowing from the throne of god into rebecca's spirit and soul and mind and yes even her emotions and i speak that in jesus name um fran and hunter i just felt like the lord put a word in my heart for you guys and it was legacy He is creating a legacy in you two together and in your children. And that he's going to show you what that means. But there are things that have been gifted to you in your families or in your lives that are going to flow and come out and create something far more amazing than anything you've ever thought. But there's going to be a great legacy. And it's going to be part of this family that he's got a plan for. I I also, for Hunter and Fran, I just, (laughs) the Lord has an incredible anointing that he is pouring onto you. That you have a spice, a strong, strong spice about you. And that joy isn't just for Rebecca. That joy is in the two of you. It's a spicy joy. It is a spicy joy, and it's going to be unique to you. God gave it to you, and he created you the way he wanted to. And it's going to be so incredible as you walk in who he has made you to be. Not like anybody else, but like you. And so, enjoy. Man, savor it. It, Discover it. Decide to walk in that adventure because it is going to be absolutely incredible. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to have had this time together to share in the celebration service of the life. The, this is this is something that all we, all of us is going to face, Father. We're all going to face this this time. I pray, Lord, that we would all, like today, enjoy the fellowship of the saints and the glorious homecoming. We thank you, Father God, that Greg is with you. We declare that, and Father, we thank you that right now that Rebecca is with you also right now. You are with her and her heart. The hunter is comforted. The friend is comforted. They'll be surrounded and encapsulated in your love and also in the fellowship of the saints. 
Thank you, Father God, for teaching us your way, especially as our time draws near in the time of history. We know that in the last days, there are perilous times, but in the last days also, there are wonderful times. We thank you, Lord God, that Rebecca is surrounded with wonderful things and wonderful people and wonderful times. Let your joy be full, honey. Let your joy be full. In Jesus' name, Father, amen. We're now going to let y'all head on out. There are tables set up with refreshments, and we just want to get y'all out first. And then we're just going to have a time for people to fellowship, hang out, and uh, support you with our love. <laughs>